Hi guys, as promised for my hair people, I've decided to go ahead and give you another hair video. This will not be the typical hair video that I usually do. This is going to be talking about hair, skin, scalp problems, and soap. So I'm going to make both of you happy, the hair people and the soap people. I'm going to make a soap, but I'm going to tell you why I'm going to make a soap. We're going to address cradle cap, as it is known in babies, or seborrheic uh, dermatitis. Seborrheic so dermatitis is caused by the yeast Malalacia furfur or Petrosporum ovale. That is the yeast that causes seborrheic dermatitis. It is caused because it could be genetic, it could be um, a hormonal thing for women or men, it could be a um, immune system problem. You have, you know, you don't have the ability to suppress this yeast. It is a yeast. It's a, a yeast fungus. Uh, or it could be your diet. Those are the four causes. They're not definite, but they any one of these four could be the reasons why you have seborrheic dermatitis. Like I said, it is called cradle cap in babies and young adolescents. It can cause hair loss depending on the severity of it. If it if it's all over the head and those follicles cannot regrow back because of this yeast is attacking the head it's not going to go anywhere and you're not going to grow your hair back until you treat the areas. Where does it affect? It can affect the trunk area, front and back. It can affect the face for men and women, but men more in general that have seborrheic dermatitis because they grow really coarse hair out of their face. And because of this coarse hair, that means that they have more sebaceous glands in this area as well. And so that hair can be attacked by the Malazasia furfur yeast. Um, it attacks the forehead, the facial areas here, from the forehead and the scalp. Okay, those are the areas that it attacks. Um, cures for it. There are some cures. Um, chemical cures, not really. There are treatments that you can, you know, go and buy tea gel, coal tar, um, shampoos, um, head and shoulders, um, maximum strength dandruff control or something like that, Selsun Blue, things like that you can buy, but what they do is they are temporary, which means that you'll keep using them and using them and using them, and then you'll notice that eventually the, the, the problem comes back. You start seeing more redness, you start seeing more scaling, you see more flaking, you have more itching, and that's because all it did was mask the effects of the seborrheic dermatitis. It did not cure them. We're going to go with a natural way to cure them. We are going, I'm going to be making a soap and this is for a person that has seborrheic dermatitis and um, I'm going to be tracking you know the progress of it by pictures. I will not be showing you the progress of the pictures because this person does not want to be seen on on camera or put out on the World Wide Web like that and I respect them for that um, so I'm going to respect their wishes. Um, you also will not see me making the soap as it took me six videos to show you how I made just a regular soap, um, just a basic plain soap, and um, I, I really don't want to bore you with that again. So, um, ingredients that we're going to be using. Goat's milk, which has been curing eczema, which seborrheic dermatitis is just basically, it, it is a form of eczema. I, I say again, it is loosely termed as a form of eczema. The differences are in the scaling of the skin and the dryness and eczema usually occurs on legs, arms, on limbs. Um, you can have it all over though. I'm, I'm pretty sure you can't. In this case, um, we're going to be using the goat's milk to cure the eczema or the seborrheic dermatitis of the scalp and body. The soap is going to be a shampoo slash body bar as well. It is going to have olive oil but not extra version. I will be using whole olive, um, olive oil. The real deal organic olive oil I'm going to be going to get. Um, extra virgin saponifies but it's it's really light and so the... <sighs> anyway, it's been curing dryness for years. Um, for a lot of people. Um, the Africans when they were came over as slaves and you know for a while they started using it to just rub on their skins to keep them moist because of the drier air. What else do we have? Aloe vera gel. This is not going to be going into the soap I'm making, but I could make one later with it. 
Um, aloe vera gel is a healer. Not only is it a healer, but it's a moisturizer, and it's good on rashes because it heals and soothes that redness, and the moisture gets in to start to, you know, take the tightness away so it's not so itchy. That's not going to be going into soap at this time. We're going to be using vitamin E oil, which is also a moisturizer and a healer at the same time. These are skin rejuvenators or regenerators. They help to regrow good skin which is good. I'm going to be using in the soap calendula flowers which is a good soother and a healer. It helps to regenerate skin as well and it helps to soothe those rashy areas. I will not be using chamomile at the time but I could at a later time. My chamomile flowers they help soothe as well rashes and um, sensitive skins which anybody with seborrheic dermatitis knows that you have sensitive skin because not everything works well. Um, sweet almond oil is another one of those moisturizers for the skin and it's it's great for the skin actually this one and wheat germ oil right there are great rejuvenators for the skin these are used in a lot of facial products out on the market um, they all like to use their their oils and these two oils because they're great at skin and rejuvenating and moisturizing and then last but not least, tea tree oil. Why? Because Malassezia furfur is a yeast and yeast is a fungus. Tea tree oil, antibacterial cidal, and antifungal. Now you guys can take any one of these mixtures, whip them up, and do some treatments like you're um, at home. They say that you can wash your head with some goat's milk and tea tree oil and then rub some you know aloe vera gel and vitamin E oil onto the affected areas and sit with some tea tree oil on your face at night. Oh, there are a couple other things that are good for it. Um, Borgata oil and evening primrose oil and flaxseed oil are good but the one that is is mainly really really good for this is Borgata oil all of them are higher in, in linolenic acids and um, they really really go right to the the root of rejuvenating and, and regenerating that skin I'm trying to get my hand on some Borgata oil so since I don't have it I will be using the tea tree which you could use the tea tree with the Borgata or I could use flaxseed oil I guess but probably the results would not be the same I don't know we'll see um, yeah, you can mix up any one of these things and, you know, put in some shea butter. Um, I do not suggest putting goat milk in shea butter. I will tell you that. If you're going to use it on its own, then use it on its own. Just, you know, pour it over your scalp, put a bag on, let it sit, and then rinse it out. Um, I'm going to be using it in a soap because I have preservatives for it. So I'm going to use it in my, um, in the shampoo slash body bar that I'm going to make. Um... I'm hoping this is going to be, well not hoping, I'm, I'm fairly sure this is going to be successful and at least giving a lot of relief. Um, as for curing, I don't know. I know that eczema um, has been cured by goat milk for a while. So There's my hair video. I promised it, I delivered it, and I've made both soap people and hair people happy. Later.